Hi designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Design School and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to emboss and deboss your graphics using Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Dimension. This was a request from Amiral TV, so if you have a video that you'd like to see, go ahead and comment that below. Now you could use this method to just create a basic embossing or debossing, but you could also use this for a hot foil stamp or a spot UV. Um, you can add different materials and I'll show you how to do that using Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Dimension. Before we get started, I did want to mention that if you're using this tutorial and you're stuck on your project and just not sure where to go next, I do offer one-on-one -on -one virtual coaching where I'll walk you through your project, you can send me all the info beforehand, and we'll take 30 minutes to go through your project and get you unstuck so you can move forward and meet those deadlines. Typically, whatever mock-up I've made in the video, I sell in my creative market, but in this case, it's kind of a custom thing, but um, go ahead and check out my creative market. There might be a model, an OBJ file that uh, would help you on your project, so I'll put the link below. But if you're ready for the tutorial, then let's get started. All right, so I'm here in a new file in Illustrator. I have my assets gathered. I'm gonna use my logo as the item that I'm going to emboss and deboss, and then I've pulled this file, this book cover from my previous tutorial, because I figured that would be a good thing to use for a mock-up to show you how a gold foil logo would look on a cover. So if you want that tutorial, go check out my book cover tutorial. I'll link that below. Um, we're gonna use it here in a minute to show you how to deboss as well. So um, to start with embossing, I always select the logo and I'll go to Object, Compound Path, and Make. That'll make sure that everything um, stays all grouped together. You could also just group it, but making a compound path really solidifies everything into being its own shape. You can choose a color that you want and then open up your 3D Materials panel. If this isn't already open for you, you can go to Window and 3D Materials is the first thing that's listed under this break. And then from there, I'm going to click on Extrude and you can see that it's adding a lot of depth. Um, and so from here, I'm just gonna customize it. I'm gonna choose 0.05 as the depth. You could go deeper. Honestly, um, you can adjust a lot of that inside of Dimension. So maybe I'll just go a little bit thicker. Maybe I'll just do a 0.1 so that it gives me a little bit of range when I'm um, decreasing the depth into the book. So now that I'm here, I can also customize some of the finishes with beveling. You can toggle that on. So if you wanted the hard edges, classic is a pretty good one to go with. If you wanted round, there's just a few options in here that you can customize to give it the look that you're looking for. I think I'll choose round and I'll bring down the width to like 25% and it's a little grainy in this preview, but it will be a live vector file once we save it out, but it's just giving a little bit of a curve. So I think that's a look that I'll like, but yeah, maybe classic is better. It's just up to you. And then for debossing, there's kind of two ways to go about it. So what I could do is make a copy, just holding option, shift and click and drag, and then come back to those beveling options. And you can see that there's these round outline and square outline, these ones have some options that give us a little bit of a lip around the design. So this is one way to go about it. It will kind of give it more of an embossed look. So if you really wanted it to be fully debossed, like stamped into the cover, what I would do is come back to whatever the object is that you're trying to put it on. So for this instance, you can see here, I'm just going to make a copy because I do want that angle in a minute. But um, you can see here that with this shape, it's an open spine. So what I did was I drew the outline. There's not really a front surface to cut out of in this instance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another rectangle that's almost the exact length and width of the cover. And I'm going to make sure it has a solid fill. And I'm going to take our design here, come to the appearance panel, and I'm going to turn off or just delete the 3 d materials because I want these paths to interact. So this one is gonna take a little bit of styling on the Illustrator side, whereas embossed, you can do a little bit more from dimension, but this option is gonna be a little more customized in Illustrator. So once I get the placement how I like, imagining the book cover um, and the logo placement and just getting everything aligned, I would like. I'm going to make sure that the graphic is over top of the surface. Highlight both of them, come to Pathfinder and hit subtract. And this is where that compound path is going to be really important because if you have something that's just grouped and you use the Pathfinder tool to minus, 
sometimes it just it chooses what it's subtracting like whatever the the higher order of the graphic whatever is grouped first it'll subtract that but you'll be missing pieces and you'll just say what's going on so always make sure to go to object compound path and then create that um, before doing multiple objects being subtracted from one surface and then with this we're going to do the same tool where we're going to choose extrude and i will choose probably like 0.1 for this and this depth we can adjust in dimension so i mean maybe even 0 0.05 would be better and then we can adjust that and it shouldn't skew too much so we're gonna now take these into dimension and i'll show you how they look but first we have to save these all out so i'm going to highlight all of the 3d files right click collect for export and as multiple assets and this is where we can label everything Make sure from the file format down here, you're choosing OBJ as your file format and then click on export. All right, so now I have dimension open and I've opened up a mockup I already had created. And I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my emboss OBJ file and drag it into my design. This is where I'm just rotating and getting my placement. Um, you can see there as I'm pulling it up, it just starts to peek through, right? And just moving up and down, I can make it as pronounced or as shallow as I like. I kind of like a little bit of a shallow look because I think that looks more realistic. Um, and then also you're able to scale, make sure you have the full group um, selected because all of these little individual pieces, they're all in um, different layers underneath the folder. So I just make sure I have embossed selected and then I can scale things down um, to whatever makes sense for my design. So if you're just doing a regular emboss, I would go and find the same exact material that you used before. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find my bumpy leather that I used, leather grain, and I'm gonna drag that over emboss. And now you can see it added that texture to the graphic. So opening up my folder, I'm just gonna choose the first layer in this group because if I change one element of the group it'll change the entire group unless I break this link so if you wanted individual colors on different um, objects here then break this link and you're able to customize it but since it's all grouped together now I am able to change the color on everything so if I scroll down there's color and I've already copied my hex value so I'm just going to double click there and paste it in so once you have that material applied to your entire object then we can make some adjustments so that it matches the uh, grain of the entire object. This is actually a material from an older version. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag and apply the new material. All right. So I just updated the leather to match because the version that I had used previously was the default leather grain for Adobe 3, but in Adobe 4, it's slightly different. So now I've updated both the cover and the graphic to have the same material. And you can see once I turn on ray tracing, and you'll see a better version of it once I actually render. It looks like it's an embossed graphic. Now to do the debossed version of this, I'll start with that first option. So I'll just drag in my graphic in the same way that I did the first one. And I'm putting the graphic in the exact same spot as the emboss, but then I can just hide it so that I can work within my um, deboss graphic. And I'm moving it down so that it's super flush with the uh, design. And then I'm dragging that same leather texture over the deboss graphic. And then come to the materials panel, scroll down, and I'll select my blue color. And you can see that in this version with that uh, bevel option added, it adds that like pressed in look without it being... Um, completely like cut out of the cover. Now next I'll show you how to make it look cut out. So in this instance, I'll drag that second OBJ file with the graphic cut out and I'll get that into placement. And I'm gonna hide the uh, deboss one so that doesn't show up as we're getting things set in place. Okay, and then once I have that file in place, same method, we're going to use that leather texture I'm going to drag it over the whole group and then I'm going to click on the first layer within the group, come down to the materials and 
If I want to match the rest of the spine exactly, I'll just click on the spine layer that I have. I've got the material repeating at 4.2. So I'm going to copy that here. I'm just typing in 4.2 and then scrolling down to change my color again. And now in this version, it looks like the design's actually been pressed into the cover. So there's no uh, bump around it like in the first version of it, but it just depends on how you want to style the design. Um, this one I would recommend if you want a true deboss. And here are the final looks. Here's how the emboss looks. Here's how the deboss number one looks. And here's how deboss number two looks. All right, designers, that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this content and want to see more, please subscribe and leave a comment below with what you'd like to see next. Until next time.